Hello everyone, my name is Pradeep Kumar K and I am an assistant professor in the department of electrical engineering at IIT Kanpur. I am very happy to announce this course fiber optic communication systems and techniques. As you all are aware today the bandwidth demand has increased exponentially owing to many multimedia driven internet traffic. We all use smartphones, we all want data on the go. We watch movies on smartphones, we watch videos on YouTube, we share large sized data files within you know from one, uh, one place to another place, however remote that place might be. But if you have ever wondered what drives all this internet traffic and many other type of high speed data communications, you would see that underlying all this data communication network is an optical fiber network that is data is carried through optical fibers uh, in an appropriately modulated form of light. So this optical fiber network which actually uh, was developed first by the optical fibers and then developing the network on, on the optical fibers uh, was actually pioneered uh, in the 1960s the optical first optical fibers which were uh, for use came up in the late 1960s. Uh, where the data rates were just a few kilobits per second. However, today the data rates have reached about 100 gigabits per second which is the latest Ethernet standard and the data rate is continuously increasing and is expected to reach about 1 terabit per second per channel. Okay? And it is necessary because of the large demand in the traffic. But what makes an optical fiber network work? Uh, the physical infrastructure of an optical fiber network consists of many many fibers, thousands and thousands of kilometers of fibers linking all over the world, one continent to another continent, one country to another country and within country, within cities, everywhere you see you have fiber optics uh, or, or optical fibers laid out and this fiber optics uh, uh, in order to carry light or in order to carry data, it requires that we actually have a source of light which is then modulated according to the data that we want to transmit. So you want to transmit a video, you want to transmit an audio, you have to choose an appropriate modulation format and then map your data onto the light which is, which is what the information carrier that is that, that we use in optical fiber networks. So you have light which is modulated and even of the characteristics of the light is modulated and this light propagates over thousands and thousands of kilometers of course aided by all other physical infrastructure such as um, you know couplers, gratings, multiplexers, routers, all these uh, are you know collectively called as WDM components. So you have a physical infrastructure where you have thousands and thousands of kilometers of optical fibers which are the carriers of light, light carries information therefore optical fibers carry information. At the uh, in order to uh, send your light which is carrying information you want to have a good light source which is not an ordinary bulb or a, uh, or a candle light but these are special light sources known as lasers and at the end of the transmission you want to be able to convert from light which you cannot see, which you cannot feel and which you cannot touch but from that you want to convert back the information onto the actual data that you have transmitted and that has done by a photo detector. And unfortunately optical fiber though has very low loss and therefore enables long distance transmission and has very large bandwidth and therefore enables high data rate communication still suffers from some drawbacks in the sense that it will uh, distort and add noise to the signal that is propagating and it is the job of the receiver to actually mitigate all those impairments that the optical fiber network has imposed on the data and to recover the original data that was actually transmitted because at the receiver you do not really get the original data in the same form as you have transmitted. So it is the job of the receiver to actually uh, take the information or take the received signal and then process the received signal in order to obtain the original data. And the quality of the optical fiber network is characterized by many many uh, performance parameters but from a point to point link that is between one node to another node in an optical network you characterize the performance in terms of the bit error rate that is how much errors are introduced when you transmit so and so number of bits. Okay? But 
how do we go about studying this optical fibers or opti optical fiber communications? Well, we need to first uh, you know uh, learn about the infrastructure that goes into the optical network and this infrastructure as I have told you consists of optical fibers which are the main carriers of information in the form of light being propagated inside the fiber and then you have the support infrastructure as I would call it. You have an optical source which is a semiconductor laser, you have a detector which is a photodiode, then you have uh, because you are not only sending information between one person to another person or one uh, channel, you have multiple channels. So, you want to be able to filter out a particular channel, route another channel to somewhere else. So, you want to have routers, you want to have wavelength converters, you want to have filters, multiplexers, you want to have um, couplers to couple light from one uh, channel to another channel. So, you have all this support infrastructure which would need to be studied. Okay? And then the most important thing is to put this infrastructure into use by actually modulating light with the data that you want to transmit and understanding what sequence of operations are necessary at the receiver to recover the original data back. So, that the data that you have recovered originally, I mean data that you have recovered actually matches with the originally transmitted data. So, accordingly this course which is titled fiber optic communication systems and techniques. Okay? So, note both the points that you have fiber optics in the title as well as techniques in the title because this course is going to be a blend of theory and practice. I will show you some experiments, I will uh, discuss some numerical modeling and of course, I will teach you all about optical fiber communication systems. Okay? The course is structured in three modules. In the first module, we look at the main reason why optical networking or optical fiber communication exists in the first place and that is optical fibers. Optical fibers if you have seen or if you have uh, looked at on internet uh, the image of an optical fiber, you would actually see that it is actually a very thin layer uh, of, of, a, of a, a thin layer of fiber. Okay? It is uh, an individual optical fiber which is used in most long distance communications barely has a dimension of a human hair, okay? yet it can carry terabits per second of data, aggregate data would be even much uh, higher in that small dimension. How is it possible? What are the physical characteristics of optical fiber that makes this communication possible is our first module. So, we look at what is the construction of an optical fiber how light propagates inside an optical fiber, uh, how to first uh, describe light, what is the nature of light that we need to use, whether a simple ray theoretical approach works or should we actually invoke Maxwell's equations. Even if we invoke Maxwell's equations, what kind of solutions those Maxwell's equations will impose upon the fiber. All these characteristics is what we study. We start with a basic introduction of light as a uh, electromagnetic wave talk about Maxwell's equations very briefly, then talk about reflection and transmission. An important aspect of reflection called as total internal reflection, we talk about that one. And then we look at how light is coupled into the fiber, what a form light will travel inside the fiber and what are the physical characteristics of the fiber. How much attenuation does the fiber impose on the light that is transmitting? what is meant by dispersion, how does dispersion affect data rate, what is meant by polarization mode dispersion. So, all these physical characteristics which impose a fundamental limit on the data rate, we talk about that. We also talk about the practical aspects of an optical fiber, how to cable the optical fiber, what happens when you take an optical fiber and bend it, what happens when you, you know, couple one fiber to another fiber, what sort of couplers are used, uh, adapters are used. So, we talk about all this in the first module. Right? We talk about fibers, characteristics of the fibers, light propagation inside the fibers and different types of fibers. Then in the second module, I go over the support structure that is I have this module titled as WDM components which means I talk about optical sources which are the sources of light which will carry information. Uh, what is meant by a semiconductor laser diode, what is meant by a semiconductor first of all and then we talk about what is a laser and then how does semiconductor laser work. Then we talk about detectors, so how to convert light from light into electrical form which is what the most widely used transducer that we have light converted into electrical form. We talk about photodiodes, different type of photodiodes, what limits a photodiode operation, what limits a photodetector circuit operation and then we talk about amplifiers because a signal 
drops in power you need to amplify the signal. So, different types of optical amplifiers that are used in optical networks we talk about and then we talk about all the other support structures such as filters, multiplexers, gratings and so on and so forth. Once we have understood this physical infrastructure, so now we are ready to actually put this into use to communicate data. So, we start first with basic analog communication review we see how optical analog communication systems work and then we move on to digital optical communication systems because that is the main uh, uh, mode of communication today both long haul as well as short haul everything has become digital. So, we talk about digital communication systems uh, how it can be uh, uh, implemented using optical uh, fiber uh, communication systems we talk about different types of detection over the last 15 years a different type of detection called as coherent detection has taken over the earlier formats of detection. It offers tremendous advantages in terms of increased data rate, high spectral efficiency that is very good usage of the bandwidth that is allocated to the user. So, we talk about what makes coherent detectors work and finally, what are the signal processing operations that we need to perform on the received signal in order to recover the original signal back. This signal processing algorithms is something that is uh, kind of a recent phenomenon in optical fiber community. Earlier the simpler receiver operations were used, but now because of coherent detection you need to take care of lot of other things as well in addition to simple processing of signal. So, we see what are the different signal processing operations, DSP algorithms that need to be used. Finally, I close this course by talking about few measurement techniques and also telling you about how optical fibers can be used for other applications such as sensing applications. The main audience for this course is the one is, is young engineers who are looking at uh, how optical fiber communication can be harnessed to further increase communication data rates. Okay. So, this will be a first course therefore, we would not go into lot of intricate details, but we do cover enough details so that you can appreciate both the main features of optical fiber communications and as well as look at what are the problems that you actually face when you try to build a optical fiber communication system. The target audience also includes those who want to refresh their knowledge of optical fiber communications maybe because you are now required in your workplace and those who have trained in traditional communication systems and who want to apply those techniques to optical fiber communications also may find this course to be useful. The course requires a background of electromagnetic theory, communication systems. I hope you do have that background and if you are, if you have that background then you are ready to learn one of the most important communication systems apart from wireless communications that of course, is covered by other courses. The one that is used to provide communications all over the world at very low losses and very, very large data rates something that no other communication system can provide. So, I look forward to this course and an active engagement with all of you. Thank you very much.